Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and now to our first major conversation. Uh, the president of Guinea-Bissau, Umaro Sisoko Mbalo, um, has said many members of the country's security forces have been left dead after an attempted coup d'etat in the West African nation. Yesterday, reports emerged of gunfire near a government building in the capital, Bissau, uh, where the president was reportedly attending a cabinet meeting, leading to fears of another military takeover in a region that has seen successive coups in recent months. However, the president on Tuesday said the situation was under control, calling it a failed attack against democracy. He also said the well-prepared and organized attack, that's what he called it, a uh, well-prepared and organized attack, uh, could have been related to people involved in drug trafficking, but, but he gave no further details. While Mr. Mbalo uh, won the December 2019 presidential election, he faced a last-minute standoff with parliament before taking office the following February. Now let's uh, look at the return of military rule uh, to some West African countries and of course um, uh, let's also look at the implications for the stability on the continent. I want to welcome Mr. Paul Ejime, our guest on uh, The Breakfast this morning. He's an independent consultant on strategic corporate communications, peace and security in elections. Mr. Ejime, good morning to you and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kofi. Thank you for having me. What, what, how did you feel when you first saw the news of gunfire in Bissau, the capital of Guinea-Bissau, yesterday? Well, it's becoming now um, predictable in uh, West Africa and what you might call um, contagion or domino effect. Um, it was there in Mali, um, Guinea, Burkina Faso, and then you were asking uh, which country next or which president uh, uh, next. Um, and that is because of the rush of democracy. Uh, president Ampalo is talking about um, attack on democracy, but it is the African leaders, in fact, some people call them um, rulers, that have attacked democracy. And then the military is just um, because they have the guns. That is why theirs um, appears to be um, very uh, pronounced. But otherwise, you will agree with me but that when you organize a flawed election or you uh, take power uh, or want to, con you know, elongate your tenure by uh, changing the constitution and not delivering on, uh, and you cannot protect your people, uh, you know, their lives and property. There is no benefit of democracy. You are also attacking democracy. And I think um, it is the, the, these um, political rulers or leaders have brought this on themselves. Unfortunately, it is the uh, common people, common man, you call them, common woman, that is um, the victim. Uh, here was a man uh, whose election, by the way, still uh, under legal challenge at uh, the ECOWAS um, uh, community court because uh, his uh, opponents alleged that, um, and that is true, that he was sworn in when the Supreme Court had not uh, certified his election. And so they said um, it was a coup. Uh, and this, is, this has snowballed now into what is happening today. And then look at the bloodshed. It, it, it's very bloody from what um, is I mentioned. And that is not good, uh, even though the country is uh, known for uh, instability about nine coups uh, since uh, independence from Portugal in 1974. Uh, this is, um, he is also a former minister, prime minister, army general, 49, by the way. So you will expect that um, he will do better. But here we are, um, uh, deja vu, um, the same thing um, uh, the French will say. Uh, the more things change, the more they remain the same. But um, African leaders and uh, will have to check it, particularly in West Africa, about how do they deliver. Perhaps they need to echo us. It's uh, just um, uh, you know stumbling about in the, in the way it's handling the suspension, um, sanctions. Yes, but if you don't follow, if you don't look at the um, uh, uh, these instruments that is there for you to use, like early warning system. This was then in coming since 2019 or 2020 that this has um, uh, lingered. He talked about um, uh, drug. Yes, drug is an issue. But one cannot even know, will not know, whether this was not um, organized um, to eliminate um, opponents. And um, so that is what we have in Africa. All um, very, many questions, but few um, uh, answers. 
Um, so that is what we have. And so ECOWAS will have to go back to the drawing board. Uh, the leadership at ECOWAS in the past um, uh, 10 years has not uh, covered itself in glory. I think that is the problem. Um, they, are, they are not proactive. They have not shown some effectiveness in address, talking to themselves, to, to their fellow leaders, about the way that they are attacking democracy themselves. And not just when the military takes power, then everybody um, uh, talks about condemnation and all that. First, do your own part, and then you can then um, uh, accuse others of, uh, of whatever. That is not a justified military rule. It is an aberration and should not allow. But when you make peaceful uh, 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 change impossible, you are inviting a violent change. Uh, look at how many people have suffered, have died now because of, uh, 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 you know, uh, power and ambition. So I, I think um, there has to be some um, uh, reality check. Otherwise, you will say, who, who is uh, going to fall next? Mm. Okay, so um, let's also, I, I'd like us to, I know that in the course of this conversation, you have mentioned one or two issues, but let's look at what could be the reason for this failed attempt in guinea bissau I mean, for the case of Burkina Faso, uh, you would also want to agree with me that the issue of government failure to stabilize, I mean, or the issue of the attacks of the jihadists at the time uh, led to all of that. And you feel like the people are already accepting. It feels like the people are already supporting and chanting for military government to come into place. So, but what could be the reason for um, this particular one that we're looking at, even though it did not succeed, it was a failed attempt. And you want to also make reference to another time where there were several failed attempts at this point in time. So what could, be, what could cause uh, the failed attempt of coup uh, in uh, Guinea-Bissau? Well, it is just, um, in fact, um, when was it? Was it uh, last year, 2020, 2021? There was, um, uh, the military had to, uh, you know, arrest some people over a plot that, uh, you know, failed plot. So it is not unusual in Guinea-Bissau. And then you ask, what is um, a country of uh, 1.9 or 1.6 million people, but has never known peace? Um, only I think only one uh, president has served um, a complete term. That tells you a lot. And um, you have generals uh, involved in, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, drug trafficking, and um, they have really not. Um, and by the way, ECOWAS had um, a, a military for uh, uh, mission until when um, Ambalo himself took up and decided to expel uh, the ECOWAS um, uh, uh, eco -mid. Me. So, and now you ask, one, if uh, they were there, like they are in the Gambia, probably this would not have happened. But he, I think he's, uh, he became, it's about ego. He thought uh, he could do it, he could ride the, uh, the uh, weather, uh, the rough weather. It's not easy to govern when you are not obeying the rule. I, I, like I said, his um, uh, election is still um, uh, in, this, in dispute, and echo, in fact, they the said yesterday that uh, this uh, attempt happened. ECOWAS court was um, uh, hearing the case, and they have uh, adjourned it. And so for somebody who has that um, legitimacy problem, you will think that um, he will, um, um, you know, tread them um, uh, softly or be magnanimous, um, you know, walk until uh, issues are... It is not clear, like I said, it's still opaque to know whether this was not an attempt to eliminate opponents, or was it a genuine um, uh, frustration by those who think that uh, he's not um, uh, doing... Um, it's about governance. It, whoever is there today in uh, Guinea-Bissau, but it's across the, uh, the region, whether it is Luxophone or Anglophone or uh, Francophone, um, it is there. If you do not deliver, if you don't give the people the benefits of democracy, there will be disaffection, there will be um, uh, anger. And, and, and uh, if you add the anger to hunger and then um, insecurity, what do you have? And that is what is um, uh, playing out in the whole of uh, Sahel and, then, and West Africa, uh, without exception. So the leaders or the rulers, they have themselves to blame. And until and unless they check this... Um, fragrant uh, uh, violation of the constitution or, you know, of our electoral um, uh, uh, framework and, and, and codes, they will continue to have this type of, um, you know, uh, assault on democracy. 
So it is actually the rulers that are the ones that are assaulting democracy. The military, because they have the coercive uh, instruments, the coercive power, the weapon, that is when everybody starts shouting. But when a leader changes the constitution, like it has happened in Guinea, it has happened in the Côte d'Ivoire, when they do that, or they lock up their opponents, or they fail to, um, uh, you know, uh, address insecurity, that is what happened in Mali. The, the president then uh, couldn't um, address the insecurity that has been there for a very long time. It, 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 and then in, um, in Guinea, I've said that the uh, president there changed the constitution. And then um, um, Burkina Faso, it is because Kabore there, the president, has not been able to rein in um, these terrorists and um, uh, jihadist uh, groups, which he promised to do. Um, so this is an, it's a cross. If you go to calm down, even in Ghana, Ghana recently was now uh, deploying troops along its border with uh, Burkina Faso because of, um, uh, 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 you know, these jihadists, they are there working. Again, ECOWAS has uh, what you call the early warning. And then it, it, it works with um, civil society to produce uh, reports, daily reports, monthly, that has been warning against this type of, um, you know, the movement and then uh, uh, dangerous activities of uh, um, uh, uh, these terrorists and uh, jihadists. But um, ECOWAS has refused to use uh, that instrument to do what you call preventive diplomacy. You don't wait, you fire, you don't wait, once the fire has, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, flame, you know, has um, uh, taken off, that is not when you begin to fight it. You have to prevent it. Bring your fire extinguisher ready. Understand how to put that fire. But not because once the fire is there, you don't know how long and how far it will go. This fire is um, Ecowas, the Ecowas region used to be known as uh, the Cool Belt. And I think um, that um, inglorious uh, past is now being um, reenacted, which is very unfortunate. Um, let them be, um, um, I think everybody now let ECOWAS used to have them, um, let them bring all those uh, instruments for the uh, uh, conflict management and prevention. And then, um, uh, you know, how to manage crisis, beginning from the country, from local, you know, national level, and then you bring it, uh, escalate it to the, to the regional level. Okay. And make sure that you carry the people along. Okay. And the, pe the people too, the electorate, is also um, a referendum on them. Are they choosing the right people that will, that, that, that will govern them? If they are not, let them take power back from uh, this um, uh, commission agent. These right. people, in the, uh, in the case of former French colonies, uh, three of them among this one, France also has uh, uh, a, a, a dubious role. It has uh, its uh, uh, military base. It is controlling the economy of these countries through the currency, and then is exploiting the, their resources. This are, but is because of uh, the acquiescence uh, complicity of uh, the African leaders. They have to come clean and govern. Let them show respect for and then for constitution, for uh, rule of law, and then for uh, 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 you know those things deliver on um, the, the the basics of democracy. They are not doing that. Okay, Mr. That Mr. Is, Mr. Jimmy. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. just to follow up on your question about France, it's interesting you went there. Very, very uh, um, a, a great analysis because a lot of people are using this as an opportunity to, um, to, to have a conversation or a debate about the role of France you know, on the African continent. And of course, uh, they are one of the major colonizers of African countries, uh, with, uh, still with great influence in, 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 in these African countries. Um, suspicion that they're still collecting tax or whatever back to Paris. But um, um, are we not over, you know, flogging the issue with France? Um, you know, putting too much blame on France when these countries are democracy, democracies who uh, they elect their presidents. Um, you have a certain Blair Campari in, in, in Burkina Faso who became basically um, uh, a dictator. I mean, he, he was just a amount of time, you know, to, to, people were, were not sure when he was going to leave. Um, you have uh, in Ivory Coast, you talked about Ouattara. Also, I mean, we, he was brought in. And someone was chased out, Laurent Babu, and now he wants to remain there perpetually, for instance. 
Now, are we not, not blaming France too much? Because yesterday or this last week or this week, uh, France was able to conduct an operation in the northern part of Burkina Faso, and they killed a lot of terrorists. We know how the role France has played in, in Mali, you know, first of all against the Tuareg rebels, and then after the Tuareg rebels had to run to hide because of the jihadists, they've also been combating the jihadists as well, giving the Malian government a lot of support. You know, so, so um, are we not blaming France for too much with the current state of, of, of um, coups in West Africa? Now, let us unpack it, and then uh, because we can easily confuse issues. One is that there are, you know, local uh, issues with, um, you know, the domestic um, governance system that is not working. That is one. Then the other one is external influence. You cannot rule that out. Uh, particularly with French, former French colonies. When you have them, um, they, they appear to have um, been given political um, independence without economic independence. Most some of them are now using the CFA France, a currency that is uh, domiciled in the, uh, controlled by the French Treasury. When I have your money, uh, it's like um, when I give you anything, I'm controlling what you are doing. And then you talk about uh, this issue of fighting uh, terrorism. Uh, in um, France went to Mali in 2013, um, you know, with the, uh, under the trying to support, to help, okay? They've been there for how many years now? But up to today, plus uh, another uh, 15,000 um, EU and, uh, troops or forces. Um, meanwhile, the government in Bamako cannot assess cannot control things that are happening in Northern Mali. But France can do that. And Northern Mali is rich in, in um, resources. And then you say, is it a ploy to just make that place ungovernable so that uh, the resources there, gold and others, can be, um, uh, 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 the people can continue to, to exploit it or mine it. That's another one issue. The other one is that um, France is now meddling in how uh, Mali is conducting its own insecurity. France does not want um, a competition. Uh, Mali has gone to um, Russia to ask for uh, military support, and France is against it. And here you have a coas also supporting that kind of. Uh, and you say, can you really do that? Under what um, international uh, 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 instrument will you not? Uh, will you come? A, uh, you know, uh, refuse a country from choosing whoever he wants to do um, any business, be it on defense, on economy, and all that. So because France is against that, ECOWAS is also joining. And that is part of the problem that ECOWAS now has found for itself. Not being independent, not being seen to be independent. It appears that some of the decisions are being, you know, um, uh, uh, dictated from Paris. And that is dangerous. This is, people are asking, is this the same ECOWAS that people used to know? So France, um, we cannot, like you said, overflow it. After 20, 60 years of independence, African leaders must now be independent and show that they are independent. But it's not showing. It is in name it's in so many places because they are collaborating with foreign forces to loot their own country, to uh, undermine their own uh, uh, citizens, undermine their own country because of selfish interest. And that is our ambition. If they want to stay, they will get support, military support from France. For instance, in, in uh, Chad, Chad is a, in Central Africa. But there, Idris Deby uh, was killed. He was a uh, general that was elected. But you know what happened? It was his son that took power. When the uh, Constitution had talked about um, the uh, Speaker of Parliament taking over, France was the only, French president was the only, pre only uh, head of state that went to the inauguration of uh, Idris Deby's son, Muhammad. And so you see the contradiction. Here you are talking, uh, we're bringing um, um, uh, uh, you know, fire and brimstone on Mali and other uh, military, but a military boy has also taken power in um, succeeding his father. That is not democracy. So there is that contradiction all over in the uh, French policy and then that allows them to continue. But I agree with you that it is when um, the, the people in Africa, even Africans, accept this kind of med, you know, meddling or interference, that is when it will work. But otherwise, if they had come together to say, listen, you get out of this space, leave us to manage our affairs, 
be it uh, security, be it economy. But some of these countries are not uh, are so fragile and uh, capable of doing it. So they need leaders, leaders that are visionary, leaders that are, can sacrifice, leaders that are patriotic, to be able to remove um, all these um, external uh, forces. But it is going to be tough. Because if you remember that uh, if they come, uh, they, they are afraid that they can, they can be killed. But if you are uh, leading in Africa and you are really a true leader, you must be ready to even sacrifice your life because of your people. This uh, crop of leaders that we have today, they are not um, that type. They are, you know, they, they worry about themselves, their family, and then um, their wealth, which they also now uh, try to wear out in uh, foreign countries, in France and other uh, foreign capitals. And that is why it is difficult to, for them to, to act with some independence. But that should not be. So that I hope that answers your... So, but remind you too that it's not only in uh, Fran in uh, Francophone countries. For instance, Guinea-Bissau is a uh, Luzophone. It was colonized by uh, Portugal. So you will say uh, it is more of internal uh, 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 factors that has, uh, 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 is causing problems there. Generals okay. are, yes, you know, selling, trafficking in drugs, and, uh, uh, and uh, there is poverty, there is unemployment, and it's affection. So some people have argued that the current trend is uh, yet different from what we experienced in the 70s and the 80s in terms of the coups that we're experiencing in Africa as a whole. I mean, if you want to even look at the statistics now with the recent happening. Now, others are also arguing that, uh, you know, questioning the role of the African Union in all of this, that the African Union and other organizations just fold their arms and wait for this coup to actually happen before they begin to express their concern. But like you have mentioned, that governance has always been a major issue. So, um, I mean, the governance of, you know, democratic dispensation in all these African countries where you have leaders elected and their corrupt practices and unconstitutional behaviors, which has warranted, you know, the military takeover, which, of course, you would also agree that, uh, you know, the military government is, can never be, you know, the best form of governance, no matter the worst form of democracy. So um, the other question would not be, what would be the best form, you know, that Africans need to begin to generate conversation to deepen their democracy? So it's all-encompassing question. Uh, the trend that we're experiencing, which is almost different from what we experienced during, uh, you know, the 70s and the 80s in terms of coup, and the role of the African Union in all of this. And what is the way forward? How do we deepen our democracy? Because this is issue is an issue of deficits, you know, the weakness in our democracy that constantly, you know, give rise to the need for military governance. Messi, I hope you are not a lecturer, you know, because you are asking <laughs> me to do a thesis uh, analysis. I hope I have the time. Well, times and circumstances will be different. What we had in the past may not, uh, but that body would say that perhaps if we have managed to, um, you know, practice these democratic uh, principles of uh, for the past 20 years, how come um, we are doing a bad job of it? In those days, remember that some of the countries we had just come out of independence when you had the coups, it was 70 and all that. Um, when uh, independence came in the 60s and also part of the 70s. So, like I said, time and um, uh, circumstances are different. But the, the basic are still there. It is about governance. When you do not deliver on what you promise on the basics of uh, the benefits of uh, governance, it will, um, you know, create um, a period Unhappiness, it will create this. US, there is, there is uh, so much that is happening. Then the other thing, I think I, I also agree with you that perhaps Africa can sit down, the intelligentsia and everybody sit down and talk about the kind of uh, you know, governance system. But like you said too, democracy has been is preferred because it has the the um, the elements that allows you to change the. Uh, government or people, the, those that are governed, went through the ballot box. But my, what has happened is that Africans, now the problem is that they have used those principles, holding 
uh, periodic election, but the elections are flawed in many cases. So the problem will, might probably not be with democracy, but with the practice, the practitioners, the politicians. What they do, if you go and a democracy does not ask you to go and hire thugs, does not ask you to go and buy votes, does not ask you to change constitution illegally, does not ask you to uh, to come uh, too hard on your people, not respect their human rights and the rule of law. So these are the issues. And I think uh, until and unless Africans now come back to begin to deliver, leadership is about service. It is not about being served. And that is the issue. African rulers or leaders are, are, want people to serve them. Have you seen some of the, 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 the motor case they use? They, 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 how they move? They live in large. And so there is a disconnect between them and the people they are supposed to serve. And that, whether it was in the past or now, and it is even critical now you have the digital system. In the past, nobody, you will probably take days or months to, re, to know what your leader is doing. But now, everything is in the open space. You have the social media with all its um, negativity. But it shows that you cannot hide anymore. It's like you're in the marketplace. You can't steal anything and hide it behind your back. They will see you. So that is the issue. Let Africans play by the rule. Mm. The rule, it is the lack of that um, commitment to play by the rule, that lack of that, um, uh, uh, you know, vision. Or when you are there, because some of them have also made some uh, gains, some, some impressive, uh, exemplary. You saw the Zambian man, Mangufuli, and here and there, you find them sprinkling. But that is not what is required. It wants, there has to be this uh, grand swell, and then, uh, uh, you know, a, a grand affair, those who think with, uh, democratically, who obey the principles of democracy. Here, it is being obeyed in breach. It is being um, observed in breach, the principles of democracy. They say we are democratic, but how democratic are we? Okay. So it's probably not the, the, the system, All but right. the operators. Mr. 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 Jima, you, 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 you're saying yeah. it's, it's probably not the operator in the system, but the operators. I, I see you want to ask a follow-up question. So. Yeah, the follow-up so question, because I was hoping that he answered. The, the role of African Union has also been queried in all of this. Yes, we know we had the oh, regional okay. body, which is uh, ECOWAS, uh, but African Union, uh, they have been accused of just standing and watching and not acting until things begin to happen. And some people say their loyalty lies with the government uh, of, you know, this African state. I, I mean, that will, will not be the wrong um, accusation. Because um, remember that this is a, an organization that succeeded the Organization of African Unity which fought for the independence and liberation of Africa. You want that. If these were the people, the kind of organization you had during that colonial um, uh, struggle, whether these people will be able to liberate Africa? My answer is no. And that is because they are not showing pan-Africanism. They are not showing that African spirit. They are not showing the zeal to... They, instead, they, um, um, it becomes... Um, a club of um, of, of uh, old uh, of uh, uh, colleagues who pat themselves on the back, uh, drink champagne and all that. Meanwhile, there are instruments to be used. They are not preventing. Uh, they are not proactive. They are just there. You know, as if uh, 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 that is not their. Uh, they are not playing their role. Let's face it. They are not. Or they are waiting until when a leader changes a constitution illegally. What are you supposed to do? There are instruments that uh, on governance and democracy that the AU has. ECO has its own uh, a supplementary protocol on democracy and good governance. But they are only concentrating on when they are in school. Meanwhile, these, um, these instruments have articles in them that talks about what a leader can do and cannot do. But when these leaders breach that uh, protocol, nobody calls them to order. And you are right, whether AEU, whether uh, ECOWAS, uh, by the way, ECOWAS is, uh, is one of the economic, uh, 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 regional economic communities, that's what they call them, right? and it is supposed to be in your region, you have this type of uh, a micro kind of organization that will now 
Uh, because AU sitting in um, Addis Ababa, by the way, where they are in Ethiopia, they've not been able, can you believe that, to stop the fight uh, between uh, the government of uh, Ethiopia and the uh, Tigray. They, they, can you believe that? And that is their headquarters. So you say, if you cannot remove that, um, um, whatever, the, something speck in your eyes, uh, I know uh, you, are, you are looking for, to remove the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own eye. So they have failed. I think that is what, let's face it, they have failed Africans and they need to reinvent themselves. They need to be rescued, like ECOWAS. ECOWAS used to be very, um, you know, it, it um, prided itself. It had um, international acclaim as the organization that was very on top of um, uh, crisis management. Look at Liberia, Sierra Guinea, and um, even Côte d'Ivoire. Yeah. All of them have had their issues. But the leadership of ECOWAS in those days were able to manage it. How come these other ones are not doing the same? Uh, 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 Mr. Juma, to, yeah, talking about the, yes. the, the, the past of um, uh, uh, the, the past performance of, of the African Union or the OU as it was then known, and ECOWAS. Um, a presidential, former presidential aide, Reno Mokri, uh, put out a tweet. He said, first Mali, uh, then Burkina Faso, now Guinea-Bissau. Uh, the spate of coups in West Africa is disturbing. It starts as a trickle and may become a deluge uh, with a domino effect, like you just mentioned, if we do nothing. And he went on to say, I urge West African leaders to do what Obasa and Joe did. And this is a, a question or uh, a point I'd like you to comment on. I urge West African leaders to do what Obasa and Joe did when there was a coup in Sao Tome. Um, do you remember what Obasa and Joe did when there was a coup in Sao Tome? And is that a, a, a solution? Should that be an option at this point? It is about leadership. In those days, and that brings the question of Nigeria's role. Now, we talk things happening. I think Nigeria should need to say Nigeria is, um, is not as powerful as it used to be. But remember that whatever happens in West, in Echo West region, Nigeria will take the greatest heat. It has the more than half of the population and it contributes more than 60 to 70 percent of the budget. So Nigeria should ask the question, you know, pay more attention to what is happening in ECOWAS. Because um, otherwise, it will, when it fails, if ECOWAS fails, given the, 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 the sacrifice that Nigeria has made over the years, it will amount to a failure by Nigeria. Forget the, the problems that we have at home. But um, imagine um, uh, how many uh, 200 million, million people in the other countries Compound, coming to compound what we have in Nigeria. Uh, now it's Nigerians moving, but when all these other countries become ungovernable, and then uh, you have refugees and displaced people, well, um, there might there probably not be, you won't be able to distinguish between the boundaries. So Nigeria, what did the passenger do? Passenger, they're in, manage, in uh, crisis management. You have what you call the uh, soft, you use soft power or the, and then the hard power, or this um, carrot and stick approach. But you have to balance them. There is a delicate balance. Knowing when to use all those powers, calibrate it in a way that one does not, uh, you, you, it doesn't boom around or become uh, counterproductive. A passenger will move, and Nigeria has done that. All right, uh, in, uh, Mr. Juba, I, I'm, I'm sorry. We, 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 I really would love to take your comments on this, but we are out of time and we have to move so that we can, yes. But it's been fantastic having you. And as usual, your on the spot or your spot on analysis is always appreciated. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Well, that's the much that we can take at this point. Thank you so much, Paul Ejima, for being part of the conversation. And as things constantly unfold in Africa and in West Africa, as regards the gun politics, we will definitely bring you up to speed with all of that. The breakfast will return tomorrow. The time is 7 o'clock till 9. In the meantime, if you've missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we at Plus TV Africa. And on YouTube, do subscribe at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic day. And my name is Kofi Bartels. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning.